Hey guys, it's Hans here with Angler's Covey. Welcome back to our Bug of the Month series. Today we're gonna to be tying some of my favorite terrestrial patterns. It's the perfect time of year to be fishing these bugs, so um, I'm hoping that you'll be able to follow these instructions and tie some up for yourself and find some success. So let's go ahead and get started. For a hook, we're gonna use TMC 5263 in a size eight. Okay. Um, I've got six aught uni thread in tan. I'm gonna go ahead and get this started about three eye lengths or so behind the hook eye. I'm gonna walk my thread back and then I'm gonna walk forward over that thread base I just put down and then go ahead and trim off my tag. Now again, I've got the loco foam here, chocolates loco foam. This one is the tan, pearl tan. I'm gonna tie it in in the same manner as before, okay? So it's, again, about the same width as the gap between the hook point and the hook shank. And then I'm gonna face this foam on my side of the hook because the thread torque is gonna to pull it. So if I were to tie it in, putting it on top of the hook like this, the thread torque is gonna to pull it to the far side. I don't want that. I want it to sit dead on top of the hook. So I'm gonna hold it on my side of the hook shank and I'm gonna grab just the tiniest little bit of foam with my thread and lay down four or five wraps. That pulled all, all of that foam on top. That's what we're looking for there. If it starts to roll on you, you can always use your fingers and push that baby back where you're looking for it. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna walk my thread backwards. I'm gonna go about three, three times backwards. I'm gonna come up, grab that foam with the thread. I'm gonna put three down over the foam. I'm gonna lift the foam again. I'm coming backwards about three wraps, nice far spaced wraps towards the bend of the hook. Again, coming up, grabbing that foam, putting three wraps to cinch it down. Some, when I was tying these originally, it was tempting to pinch the foam around the hook shank. You don't wanna do that because it's not gonna give us this beautiful segmented belly that we're creating right now. So you just kinda of wanna put the thread on it and tighten. So again, three wraps towards the bend of the hook bring the thread up, and then just cinch that down. Three wraps to cinch it. Again, I'm using my hand here to make sure that stuff is staying right on top of the hook shank. Okay, we're gonna put one more segment in, so I'm coming back three again, and this was gonna be around that hook shank, or around the bend a little bit. I've got three wraps, four wraps, tightening that in. Now, this is where things start to get a little different from Tim's Beetle, and you'll notice I'm keeping thread tension here while I'm talking, it's because I don't want my thread, or I don't want that foam to move. If I loosen my thread, the foam's gonna spin. So what I'm gonna do now, and I'll try to turn this so you can see, is I'm gonna, much like with uh, the Charlie Boy Hopper, I'm gonna cross my thread over this foam into the crevice right above it and take a full wrap, okay? From here, I'm gonna bump this loco foam up and capture it right in that same crevice that we created on the way back, okay? So I got it, three wraps. I'm gonna come up again, pull this foam back over this section. This is pretty loose. I'm not trying to suck this thread down into the foam here, so I'm going pretty loose. And once I get it in that crevice, I'm gonna give it a couple tight wraps. I'm gonna fold this foam over again and grab it right on top. Okay, so we got one, two, three tight wraps. Okay, same thing again. Coming up, a little bit loose till you get your thread in the crevice. Give it a couple tight wraps. Grab another section of this loco foam. Three nice tight wraps. And you guessed it, we're gonna do that yet again. So up, over, nice and soft and loose. Once I get in the crevice, couple tight wraps, fold the foam over. Oh, I'm gonna back off a little bit there. And then three nice tight wraps here to get that secured. And I'm gonna add a couple extra securing wraps, make sure nothing's going anywhere. Now I'm gonna pull this foam back, bring my thread up to the hook shank, just lay down a little thread base there and I can go ahead and Actually, I'm sorry here. I'm gonna get up to that hook eye. Now I'm gonna whip finish. So we're gonna come back to this in a moment. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut my thread. Okay, now we're going to add some rubber legs. This is small life flex in the color brown. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to fold this over, okay, in half. Actually, I'll show you right here. We're going to fold our rubber leg in half, and I'm going to tie a knot in these, okay? So create a little loop. I'm all hands here. You'll see, though. Get the other loop of the rubber leg through. Oh, I lost it. Let's try that again here. Create a loop. Pull this other end up through. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so I'm gonna create a knot there. I'm gonna come to the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna create a loop. Put these two ends up through the loop. And then tighten. Make sure you give yourself room in between the two knots. Okay, so this basically just created our rubber legs. We're gonna... All right. Okay, so we created our rubber legs. We're gonna go ahead now and reattach our thread. We're gonna attach our thread right in the middle section of this hopper. Now, we could have put the rubber legs on earlier, but in my opinion, that's just a pain with dealing with all the foam. So I'm just gonna come back, attach my thread, four wraps there, cut off my tag. Okay. Now these rubber legs, when we attach them after the knot, they're gonna wanna point in a certain direction. I'm gonna do my best to get that point pointing downward. Honestly, the fish don't care which, lay, which way the hopper legs point. Um, but from a fisherman's standpoint, I like them to look down. So go ahead and take a wrap. You'll see it's pointing up. So I need to flip that around. So I'm gonna pull that off, flip the direction that I'm tying it in. Put another thread wrap on it. Still pointing up there. Yep, see, that's what happens sometimes. You want something nice to happen and it doesn't work out. We're gonna try this again here. We're gonna see if we can pull. That's kind of what we're looking for. Okay, I'm gonna throw another thread wrap on here now that I got that leg in. And I'll pull this to that far side, right in between those two sections of foam. Right there, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna come in with my other section of rubber legs. I'm gonna go ahead and attach these guys now. Okay, those ones sat a lot nicer. I'm gonna put another thread wrap on, and then I'm gonna pull them. Let me tighten this thread a little bit. So they sit right in between those two sections of foam here, okay? Right there. So I got my legs attached and I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish now. And again, we're gonna, so if you use a little tiny whip finish tool, it's hard to get around this big foam. So I'm just gonna use my fingers and finger whip this. They sell larger whip finisher tools as well if you're not comfortable with finger whip. Okay, and again, we're gonna, we're gonna glue the heck out of this thing. So that's all gonna work out fine. So I left the joints you can see pretty short. I like them that way, okay? Just gives the idea of that jointed hopper leg. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trim out these forward facing legs here. Don't pull too hard when you go to trim these. You wanna leave a little nub that's gonna help keep them there. And if you pull hard, you'll pull your leg through those thread wraps. So I'm just gonna provide tension, nip those. Helps to have a nice sharp pair of scissors. I might need a new pair. Come to the other side. Trim those. So you can see I left little nubs. That's perfect. So those legs are sitting great. That's exactly how I want it. Can you hold just a second? Yep. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my thread again. I'm gonna reattach it up here behind the hook eye. Okay. Go ahead and trim off your tag. Okay, now I'm gonna bend this foam over. I'm gonna suck all this stuff down. So get a good thread base, come up right behind that hook eye. Give that a good wrap. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap over all of this stuff here. Okay, so I'm gonna put a thread wrap over it, pinch. I'm pinching to try and prevent the foam from spinning on the hook shank. You'll see it has spun. 
So I'm just gonna use my fingers and put it back where I want it, okay? Then lay down some more thread wraps here. Okay, now it's time to add our wing. We're gonna have our thread right about the middle of the gap here. And we're gonna use polypropylene floating yarn for this. There are tons of different items you can use for the wing. I really like this stuff, so that's what I'm gonna use. All right, so when it comes off the card, it's gonna come bent. I like to use two hanks for this, so I'm gonna just take this, trim right there, and I'm gonna use these, this section. I'm gonna fold that, and then I'm gonna cut this little loop right here, okay? Now I'm gonna take this hank and I'm gonna fold it around my thread. Okay, so I'm pushing it behind my thread on the opposite side of the thread of myself. I'm gonna reach and grab that and then line up these two ends. I'm gonna put them together and line them up. So you can see there all four hanks of the polypropylene yarn are the same length. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm gonna pinch that with those hanks wrapped around the thread, as you can see there. And I'm gonna lock, bring my bobbin down around the opposite side and lock those in. Okay, put a couple thread wraps down in front, then bring my thread back and on top of that wing. Now, if you folded everything proper, you'll have the perfect length wing and it doesn't need any trimming. We'll come back later and brush it out, okay? So now that we've got that, we're gonna go ahead and get a little dubbing. So for this, I like to use Cinnamon is the color, it's ice dubbing. So it's gonna be this one here, okay? And all right, so now we're gonna add dubbing. We're using cinnamon colored ice dub here, okay? And we're gonna dub this as tightly as possible on this thread. I don't want a loose noodle here because loose noodles leave air gaps, which leave places for water to get into and then inevitably sink your fly. So I'm gonna moisten my fingers here a little bit and I'm gonna dub this stuff on thin. I'm not using big chunks here. That's the key to getting a tight noodle is small bits of dubbing at a time. Okay, working my way down. It's gonna take several, several dubbing noodles and it helps to moisten those fingers. Okay, once I'm happy with how tight it is, I'm gonna walk towards that hook eye, look underneath, and make sure I've got all that covered. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna start working that dubbing backwards now. You see, it's a pretty thin dubbing noodle, and that's because I want it that way. I want it tight. Okay, just adding more dubbing here. Nice tight dubbing noodle. Keep this fly floating for a long time. Continue working rearward. A little bit more here. Okay, right up to the base of that wing. I wanna make sure I don't have any thread showing underneath. So you can see I've got a little bit of thread right here where my thread's going. I'm gonna add just a tad bit more and make sure I get that covered up. I'm ultimately gonna end up laying thread there and whip finishing there, so it's not a huge deal, but I like to make it look nice. So you can see, I've now got that all covered up real nicely there. Okay. Now back to the loco foam. I've got my thread sitting directly at the base of that wing. I'm gonna make sure this foam, if it twisted on me, I can manipulate it, make sure it's nice and flat. I'm gonna fold it back and I'm gonna capture it right at the base of that wing, keeping my thread right where the foam and the dubbing touch. Okay, coming up, suck it down. Another nice tight one. I'm gonna give it four or five good wraps here just to make sure that's not going anywhere. Okay, now we're gonna add the front legs. For this, I'm gonna use a single strand, again, of that small Life Flex. Okay, I'm gonna take this Life Flex, I'm gonna shove it between my thread and my vise here, so I can grab it on the other side. And then I'll bend that around the thread and just pull it up and over to the other side. 
So you can see I have that sitting right kind of where that foam head contacts the body. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in with the other end. Again, I'm gonna put it between the vise and the thread and grab it here and pull it up. So I just created a loop on the front of the fly. From this point, I'm gonna whip finish. So I'm gonna put down a three turn whip finish here. You gotta make sure you get that, those rubber legs through that loop when you're whipping. Okay, trim my thread. And now these legs are not sitting exactly where I want them. So I can go ahead and move them, position them where I like before I do any of the cutting. Okay, so I, I like to have them sit right in between the two foam pieces. I just pull and stretch and you can move it underneath the thread till you get it where you like. Okay, this one, I'm gonna pull down a little bit. That's looking great. Okay, we're gonna cut this loop now. So just put your scissor tips in here and snip that. Okay, now we're gonna cut all of these legs in one fell swoop here. I'm gonna grab the back legs and all the middle legs and we're gonna push all of them forward at the same time and cut right in front of that hook eye, okay? So that'll give me my nice short little front legs and my nice jointed rear legs. Okay, now we just have to trim off this loco foam. I'm gonna leave it about an eighth of an inch long. And I'm gonna cut my little flat section here to a point. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my whip finisher hook and I'm gonna comb out this wing a little bit with that hook. Or if you have a brush, like a pet comb works really good for this. Okay, and that's our fly. Last, last step in the process here is gonna be adding glue. We're gonna use this Loon Soft head and I'm gonna coat the entire underbody so all of this is gonna get glue in it. Okay, I'm gonna let it seep down into the crevices it's gonna lock in all that thread. It's gonna lock in your legs. It's gonna prevent anything from moving. The nice stuff about this glue is it's flexible, so it's not gonna crack if a fish grabs the fly and messes with the foam and moves it. The glue is flexible, which helps the durability of the fly. So I'm gonna grab some of that, not too much here, and put some in each little crevice. Get a little more. And if you have a bobbin, you can use a bobbin to help spread this stuff around. I didn't bring one today, so this is gonna work out just fine with the brush here. And then I will take a little bit and I'm gonna dab it on the side here, on those thread wraps where we connected these rubber legs, on this side as well. Let that seep in and dry. And that is what I call the Hanzi hopper. It's a great little a uh, hopper pattern works great for a dry dropper um, and it gives a really cool segmented look underneath with that loco foam you get a really nice iridescence to it it's just a great little pattern give some a uh, try if you need any of the materials come into angler's covey we're happy to help you find them uh, and i hope they bring you some fish mm -hmm.